How dare you, Fostex? How fucking dare you try to make the Fostex TH900s prettier? That is illegal. There's some sort of trade restriction on that shit. But yeah, these are the TH900 Mark II Anniversary Edition Sapphire Blues. And what's the deal? Why are you reviewing Anniversary Edition? Hold on, I have to, I have to apply the rag. These things are on the rag all the time because they just, they need it. I fucking need it. Why am I reviewing a anniversary edition of something? What's different? Um, the voicing is different. What's the voicing means, Zeus? I'm not sure. Yeah, it means it sounds different. Okay. So, the owner provided them to me with a couple things. Periapt cable to run balance, which by the way, you wanna hear the most fucking stupid thing ever? Th these use the same style of connection as every Sennheiser on Earth, right? Every Sennheiser has this small and large pin. But Fostex decided, since it's Japanese and Sennheiser's German, mm, they don't wanna associate with that, so they reversed the polarity on the two pins. So on this, does it show it? It doesn't show it. I think the small pin is positive on Sennheiser, and here the big pin's positive. So you can't just plug a Sennheiser connector into a set of Fostex cans, or it'll be out of phase. It'll, it'll play inverted. So you know what that means? It means when you go to buy the connectors to make a custom cable, like Periapt or you, as, you at home, these connectors are um, as little as $70 for a pair. I'm giving Fostex the finger in their own video. Why well, do that? Also, they stick out funny, and these are specifically shaped to be like this, etc. I love how it reminds me of like Mr. Speakers and the ethers and everything. When I built my own custom cables, it was like, yeah, no, we, we sell the adapter. There's 10 bucks for a pair of these metal adjusting, really fancy ones. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll take it. But Fostex, no, no, you got to go to court. You got to fight them for the right to even touch their beloved um, inverted phase uh, cable connectors. They're also not rocking the stock pads. It'd be nice if Fostex did a little bit more with their pad tech. Uh, just from experience, I have the T60s there, and the T50s, we all know, are fucking horse trash. And the T60s actually put some effort into it. And the TH1000s, there's nothing wrong with the stock pads. It's just that they're the same. They're not memory foam. They're just flat-ish. They don't add anything to it. They, they, you can get better pads on here, and, um, well, here they are. I think these are ZMF Ori? I'd, I'll figure it out later. You guys can figure this out later. It's just, I didn't bother taking them off. They're just, they're perfect. These are exactly what I, my, um, TH909s are also running, I think, a ZMF pad on them. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, Everyone's going to, when you buy a headphone, and this one is a special edition, so it's about $250, $300 more, which rolls it up to $1,600. Moon Audio has got them for $1,600. And the normal TH900 Mark II is only $1,280. A bargain now. And in all, all honesty, there's also a green version, and the red and green versions sound the same. The blue one is the only one I was able to, I wanted to review because the voicing is different. I think I still like the red better. I don't know. You Give me your opinion. Look up the red one. I'll link in the description. The red one, the green one, and the blue one. You tell me which one you like best. I think the blue is a little bit too sedated. And it's the same process that you see the, uh, the the silver flake in there, the platinum flake across here. Can't go wrong. Honestly, can't go wrong. Nothing else changed in the build. Same headband. It would have the same cable if bothered with the same cable. I'm going to run this balance off the 789 because the fuck it said so. No. Whoa. It was a loud, loud da rah rah rah. The owner wants this back, and I know why. Because these are the chillest as fucking chill headphones get, bro. These are cool cats. These are blue because they chill. Now, what they've changed, according to Moon Audio, if you want to believe their blurp in the side, 
because I, I tried to listen for the difference, but I don't have TH900s here. Got my 909s here, which don't sound that similar to 900s that I'm like, oh, I could just use these as a reference. But apparently the frequencies between 300 and 600 have been increased or expanded from 6,500 Hertz and up. The frequencies have been smoothed out a bit. And some people used to complain about, oh, TH900s, those are treble cannons. And I never got that. I did the very first edition of the TH900s. I got an old set you could tell from a basement with the attached wire. And those were just fucking just sex cans. And if I would have bought them from the owner, if I would have had the extra, I think he wanted nine or eight hundred, nine or a thousand dollars, um, nine hundred or a thousand dollars back in the day. I was like, ah, nope. And then I did the Mark IIs. I don't remember if I opened the, if I unboxed the Mark IIs and they were brand new. And I didn't really catch like a lot of treble. The TH909s, I've put on and had them be like, oof, but that's only because the amps are so demanding. And I've run these on uh, the modicum, and it's a little less problematic than the 909. And just sensual. And I'm sorry to keep putting on my head so that you can't look at them. But occasionally I want to hit this button. I don't know how to describe it. Um, let me think. It feels like there's like five headphones on right now. Just five. And it, it's it's one of those sounds that you get only from like what would be considered the best thing Fossex makes. This is it. Fossex makes a shit ton of stuff. They make amps, they make other headphones, they make speakers. This is probably the best thing they make. It just is so... Yeah, I know. I get I get criticized all the time because Zeus doesn't know how to describe sound. Well, f fuck you. Describe mac and cheese in written word. Go ahead. I dare you. In fact, let's make that part of the comments. If you can describe to me in words the best mac and cheese you've ever had in the comment, I will pin whatever I think is the best. Huh? 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 Yeah, that's what I thought. By the way, I put a lot of effort into that wallpaper. Just want to point this out because no one seems to understand. Um, these rocks that are up here above her, I had to copy from down here so it filled it in because it sort of ended like there and I wanted it to look more natural on the vertical screen. I just, I put the effort in. I put the effort in, goddammit. There's effort in these reviews. You just don't see it or hear it because... All right, this is a very trebly bit. This is um, from the... Uh, Otoram, Otori Monogatari soundtrack. This is Sengoku Nadeko. And it's just like bells, just smashing. And I couldn't be happier to hear them. The ringing, the ringing, the tonal... The word of the day is tonality. They've finally taken what was basically... The TH-100 has always been just a bass-heavy... It's just been a bass-heavy sound stagey close back and it's like ah oh, and then you you fall in love with it because of the build and the design and the the you know the history of it and it's like ah oh. now sitting here listening to them i'm sort of going oh so this is what you were going for that whole time they just they ring with tonality oh prodigy medicine i've never heard the song Let's see how this goes I could sip tea to this song. I could sit in my study next to a lightly, gingerly burning fire with a book in one hand and tea in the other and Prodigy Medicine from The Day Is My Enemy playing and just be absolutely relaxed. Hmm. Yes. It almost sounds DSP-y. It sounds like we're far enough away from things that it's not like burning the holes in my eye sockets. This song should hurt me. I'm pretty sure most headphones we're looking at up there. This song comes on and I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this on these headphones. This is a waste. Not that the Prodigy is bad, but specifically that newer album has a little bit of rough stuff going on. But I could listen to this all day. So when you ask me how a headphone sounds, you're not going to get me describing it in 275 made-up words. 
oh well it's got the sibilance is, is good because the resonance of the strip no it, it's the prodigy medicine can be played in it and you can chill out to that glitch mob way out is in they have not lost the base i will tell you that much there is just a a hmm I'm a terrible headphone reviewer and I love my job. If I hold them against my head, I could feel them physically resonating with every bass hit. And they're not blasting right now. We're on low gain at like not even 11 o'clock. These things are just cruising along. Just cruising. What do you suppose that is? Because I'm the son of the devil. Uh-huh. That's a good start. Why? Wow. Soundstage, epic. Just fucking epic. It's so far away. It does impair the imaging a slight bit. I've said this before. If you go, if you don't know what soundstage is, I'll use you, Sendies. Again, 180,000 times Zeos has described soundstage, but I guarantee you this is someone's first Z review, so let them have this. Imaging is this. How accurate across there? Soundstage is this. If it sounds like sounds are coming from here, or here, or here. And then when you get out to here, it's sort of hard to keep the imaging accurate because you're, you're taking those finite things and you're stretching them out. And I think you lose a little bit of imaging accuracy when you make headphones sound this wide. And it is one of those this wide sort of things. Oh my god. Puddles, the sad clown. Absolutely perfect for these headphones. This is Postmodern Jukebox Royals. And I'm going to get it off the one I ripped from YouTube. In the movies. And I'm not proud of my address. It's on uptown. They're just so balanced now. They really are. They are legit. Where before, if you said, I have $1,500 to spend on headphones and I want balance, I would think, Odyssey, does he want an LCD a product? Does he want this? Because, I mean, I, the base cannon, this is it. It's, oh, TH100 is base cannon. He doesn't want those. Now, as long as you can still get a pair, because it's a limited run on these, it's not going to be like... 10,000 units made. If you want a very balanced, very high quality build, very fucking nice to listen to headphone, you can finally buy the Fostex TH-1000. And not do anything to it. You don't do a goddamn thing to it. Amp it properly. You may want to play with one or two different amps. It still has, it's still very low impedance, which means the amp's going to affect it. If you got a 789, obviously this is making me smile. Like, you can't see my smile. But I'm smiling. Tripping in the bathroom. Westworld. Uh, the Sweetwater Stride. Yeah, now everything sounds like it's happening just either to the side of me or behind me or inside my head completely. It's everywhere. Sound is everywhere. None of it is offensive. When the low end has to happen, it's not one of those headphones that you put on and with every song that plays, you know it's a bass headphone. There are those headphones. Those headphones, the X2s, X1s, Fidelios are like... Fucking Frank Sinatra starts singing in a in a in a solo duet in a wait in a solo a cappella. You know they're a bass headphone because sometimes his, somehow his voice triggers the like or like oh Jesus. These these just play music, and when called upon to uh, make you shit your pants. I'm the truth we speak openly. 
Okay, um, Oh Mama by Run The Jewels from Run The Jewels 3 is my go-to. This song has just a bass line that goes boo, and it's just, if your headphones can do it, it can do it, and if it can't do it, it can't do it. And I'm very sure that just now I put it up to like loud listening. I'm not like break the headphone listening, but loud enough. And I'm pretty sure my hearing stopped from just vibrations. It's, it's, it's one of those moments like if a really loud explosion happens, you go deaf for a second. And you, not with the ringing, but just like the concussion of air is so great that silence happens. That's what happens in these. I'm going to take it to the second gain setting. Let's do this again. Let's do this again because I'm, I'm an idiot. Second gain setting, lower that down. Yeah, literally, it sounds like the bass is distorting, but I know it's not. My hearing is distorting. So, if you bass head men, go by. Go by. That's like the first time that's happened to me. Okay. Moving on. Epic score, no. Back to the future. I'm just playing music. It's not even on my head. I'm just, I don't know what to do anymore. I, they're, they're one of the mo they're, they're one of the more quality headphones. There's a lot of headphones I get here and I, I find the flaws in them. Obviously it's my job. Flaws on these pads are a little boring. You can get better, more articulate sound with more comfort from a pad swap, from a, a cheap... You're spending $1,600 on a headphone, and I can put $60 pads on a $1,600 headphone and improve it, you probably put the wrong pads on it at the factory. That's true for a lot of headphones. A lot of headphones. The wire is standard. I wish it comes with an option for balance. I'm sure the box was the exact same thing. It's not going to be the greatest. The finish is um, spectacular. But this design, this headband design, the way these flop, it's getting a little old. I'm really nitpicking now to try to find some negatives so it doesn't seem like I'm shilling the fuck out of this. This was a user who sent it to me, not Fostex. I'm not getting a deal on this if I, if I do a good job. It's just I appreciate them a lot. And I went with the 909s instead of these. And these honestly make me reconsider if I made the right decision. Because those are more money. The 909s are more money than these. Fuck. Okay. Sound demo is in the description. It will do no justice. All right. Uh, in fact, I've done all the sound demos already like weeks ago. I'm not sure... If these, I kept, I think I kept having to lower the volume because it kept, the bass would come in and be like, the mics would be like, um, no. So, you know, just deal with that. I guarantee you they sound better in real life than any sound demo with any equipment could, could do. All right. Because you literally, whatever you're wearing can't do the bass that these can do. So it makes no sense. But for now, that's, that's how I'm ending this. I'm ending this on, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Well, some of us are worthy, but the people who are worthy usually have $1,600 to spend on a headphone. Wallpaper. Yuraka's rocks are in there. Um, get that in the description. A link to these, link to the green ones, link to the red ones. You tell me which ones are the prettiest. I will be doing that thing in the comments where you describe macaroni and cheese to me. And it, whoever can describe best with text their best mac and cheese experience will get their comment pinned and liked by me it's a small gift from on high where zio i actually just want to read about mac and cheese if you can include the recipe that'd be great um links to the patreon which will pay to box this insure it and ship it back to its owner probably today because he was like i need him i need him back and i understand why he needs him back i still need him back and he'll get them back. He'll get them back. Relax. Chill, man. Chill. These are the chill headphones, except when the bass comes on. And then it's like, oh, I'm chilling. And I'm deaf. Then they're those. So, yeah. Check out the Patreon. There are yard sales that will be going on with... 
are any of these headphones? I think I've changed out all the headphones that were actually viable for going in the yard sale. Uh, no, wow. I gotta buy some more cheap stuff. That Creative Labs will be in the yard sale. Woo! Woo! So $5 a month gets you into yard sales from the 1st to the 10th. $10 a month gets you into the private Patreon Telegram chat, which is where the owner of these spoke to me and he was like, hey, I have these. Would you like to review them? And I was like, yes, sir, I would like to review those. And then he sent them to me. So that's what the Patreon does. It also, I'll answer any questions you have. In messages on Patreon, it takes up to a week because there's so many. And if in the $10 chat, I answer them within a few hours if I'm next to my phone or not next to my phone. So you're paying for that service. I provide a service just like a prostitute. I said that about myself just now on a video. That's fine. I'll prostitute out my knowledge. It's what I do. Anyway, Yuraka wallpaper, links to these, green, red, links to the Patreon down there and up in the corner. There's some links probably here on screen of my newest video and a random video that it thinks you should watch and also the Patreon again. So uh, I'll see you all tomorrow with another video or the sound demo. I don't know how this thing works. How does it even, how, do I know how anything works?